All right. Hey, Trails Collective. Welcome to this episode of Trails Collective Live. Tonight, obviously, Ian is not here. Uh, so you have two amazing hosts tonight. We have Grace, Hot Tanks Langheim, and me, Ellie, who you already hear talk way too much. So, you know, this is going to be great. Uh, Ian is actually on vacation this last week and next week. Uh, finally, this man has needed to go on vacation for a couple of years. And um, so he's on vacation. And I uh, we got a status update today that um, so he he and his family are on this island um, that does not have any a house or any structure on it. He'd like to build a dock for this island, but you have to get there by boat. Um, well, he informed us today that he might come home a little bit early because he was currently on shore with the boat. His family was on the island, but his boat motor had died over on the other side. So he's on the shore with the boat, with the dead motor. His family's on the island. And um, I'm just waiting to see what happens next. This could be a feature length film pretty soon. So uh, that's the status with Ian. And, uh, but you know, it's cool because we'll see him eventually. He might have to swim back to get them. But um, tonight you've got me and Grace. So Grace, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So before we start with the meat and potatoes, I guess, uh, I want to first recognize our newest Patreon supporter. His name is Jake Griffin. And um, I actually was fortunate to meet Jake uh, last week, I believe. He came into the store and, um, you know, he, he it, it did one of those things where he looked me in the eye and I was like, hi. And he like paused a second and then said hi back. And I thought he might be like our new hire. So I was like, oh, okay. He's probably introducing himself to Ian. Like I would, I don't want to like scare him away with my personality, but no, it turns out he just moved to the area and he's been listening to our show and he just couldn't believe that he was actually hearing me and Ian's voice, like in the flesh. And I, and it was like the weirdest thing. But um, Jake, welcome to the community. He lives around here. So we're hopefully, once my tendon gets a little healed, we'll be able to uh, run together a little bit. But Jake, thank you so much. And to thank you to all of our Patreon members, including you, Hot Pants, for, you know. Now, did you offer him a job anyway? I mean, I think we should, but he's, I, it seems like his, his uh, partner is like PhD at Cornell. So, you know, he's going to be fine. I don't, I don't know, mm -hmm. but I think we should maybe because all I'm of retired. like most of my coworkers are going to college. So it's just going to be mm -hmm. me and Ian. And when we're there together, it just like sometimes just like Nothing ideas else. happen that could be good, except for both of us don't have the time to do them. So it's like, mm -hmm. well, um, but thank you anyway, Jake, and to all of our Patreon supporters. Um, another Patreon supporter of ours, Clem Chung, is doing Twisted Branch this weekend. So good luck to Clem, first 100K. Uh, so that's going to be an awesome race to watch. So that's that's coming up here. But um, before, again, we get into the meat and potatoes, we are going to bring on Ryan Williams, who um, he just did Eastern States in a very, very good time. So he's going to join us for the meat and potatoes, but first we want to have him uh, plug one of his events. So Ryan, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks Ellie and Grace for having me. Nice to meet you both. Um, yeah, I reached out to Ian hoping that I can maybe plug a little trail race I've helped put on for the last eight or so years in uh, a little town called Norfolk in Connecticut. It's in the Northwest corner of the state. Um, it's been going on for nine years now, and um, we have a 5K, a 10K, and a half marathon. Um, the half is only two years old, but it seems like it's going to kind of turn into the more competitive of the, the three events. And uh, all these are happening Saturday, September 10th, and um, registration's live on Ultra Sign Up. Or you can check out the, the Land Trust's website, which is norfolklandtrust.org. And there will also be day of registration. Um, pretty low-key events, uh, super affordable, family-friendly. Uh, all the proceeds go to the Land Trust for conservation efforts, uh, trail work, programming. Um, 
so yeah, I, uh, I hope now, to a bunch of well, let up. me ask you this. So I, I did ultra sign up stock you cause I do that to, um, yeah. just about Don't, it. doesn't, I mean, yeah, yeah. No, right. I, so, so I, which is hard to stalk you because of your name. It's a really common name, but I, I thought that I figured out which one you were and you're the first race on ultra sign up that I found was this Norfolk, Norfolk, I don't know what it, 5k in 2014. Was that this race? Were you just like the only one? And then the second year you're like, I would like to do this with friends. Yeah. So that, I think that was my first race. Um, my girlfriend's mom has been on the, the land trust board for a long time. So she roped us into both running it that year. And then subsequently I eventually was on the board as well. So I've kind of had a long history with this race. Um, if I'm not there running, I'm volunteering and I'm helping out behind the scenes, uh, throughout the year. I love, I love that you started with a 5k and then you just did eastern states that's that's in less than 10 years that's quite an accomplishment but i was hoping that you just did a 5k by yourself and then you were lonely <laughs> no i think there were like 25 the first year so nice. not a lot, and but... what do you what are you at now how big is it now um i don't know it's still it's still growing i feel like it can be hard sometimes mm -hmm. in the neck of the woods that it's located to get going mm -hmm. but we, we've had as many as like 50 to hundred in certain events. Uh, nice. But right now the numbers are pretty low. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to, to boost them up a bit. You know, um, we get a lot of people who sign up last minute. It seems yeah. it always happens like 50 people day of. Yeah. But well, that's like, that's like a fun number. You get too big and yeah, you know, it gets real congested. Yeah, I don't think it's ever meant to be any kind of marquee event, but um, just kind of a, you know, a hometown kind of race. I mean, we get people from New York City and Boston area and stuff every year. Um, but yeah, it's great, great event, great courses. Um, the 10K is actually part of the USATF Connecticut's uh, Mountain Ultra Trail series and the half just got added to this local series out of Western Massachusetts. That's been going on probably 20 years called the grand tree. Um, so folks from Connecticut, Massachusetts might be familiar with that, but uh, yeah, we're trying to grow it, but trying to stick to the roots at the same time, you know? Awesome. Cool. Cool. Um, I, you know, side note, since like Grace, your question about him being the only person in the race kind of piqued this uh, this interest. So I'll, this will be a quick tangent, I swear. I've had this like, uh, you know, when you can't sleep on the plane or like you're really uncomfortable, just like thinking about us like a way to like hack some sort of like, like ultra sign up or like ITRA and like just make like a bunch of races that are like only you and like a couple of other people and then see you win them all. And so you have this like real long ultra sign up that's like hundred, 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 hundred. And like, I want to see like how seriously, like if we could get some like just average Joe or Jane who like has this race resume and then like mm -hmm. somehow also like hype them up on social media and like get mm -hmm. them like some sponsorship to something like Nike or something because we like completely rigged it. Like, Oh, I have this, like, well, they have, funny. they have the awards now too. I'll just sign yeah. up to those awards last year for the first yeah. time. Yeah, It's kind of like Moneyball situation. Like I'm really I into stuff it. like that. And so I'm just I like, if I like actually cared about this, th like this would be fun. <laughs> Somebody just asked me about ultra sign up because I, I just opened my race and, and I have a couple people in it who've never um, signed up for a race through ultra sign up. And somebody asked me what ultra sign, what all the numbers mean. And I said, okay, so I'm going to do, I can do a 45 minute explanation about what everything means. And at the end of all of that, I'm going to say it means nothing. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, it's fodder, you know, it's like all the shows on ESPN that are like, dissecting Josh Allen's right bicep and people are just like riveted. Like that's our version of it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Hope you, well, hope uh, you have a great turnout. what did you say? To Ryan, hope you have a great turnout for your race. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be great. Thanks. I appreciate it. 
All right. Well, now I think we should move into uh, the exciting Eastern States extravaganza because we had one for Western, but really who cares about that race? Like that sucks. So we're going to have an even better one for Eastern Thank States you. because this is actually the good race. So we have on our show, mm -hmm. uh, we have um, the female uh, winner, Justina. We have the male winner, Ryan. And then we got even lucky and we have the second place female. So this is like a lights out show. I don't know how we got lucky, but here we are. Let's get them on. Let's get them on the screen, Ellie. Let's move these people in. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, Grace, I kind of want to like let you sort of run this run this party and I can you know provide colorful commentary and tangents when appropriate. But uh, yeah, why don't you kick it off? Where do you want to start? Yes, yes. Let's get ourselves started. First off, a reminder, you can throw those questions, comments over into the chat. Would love to see them along the way. Um, thanks so much to Trails Collective for having me on here. There are going to be some very cool stories. And there's so many stories that are not even told here. Um, my story is very boring. I attempted Eastern States for my second time and I DNF'd it again. But thanks to my crew, my pacers, you know who you are and you're amazing and I love you. I did not thank um, <laughs> you supported me and I grew up um, Amelia. that was like a, a good thing because she pays justina so i got her there <laughs> and um and of course all the volunteers and the race directors were are just phenomenal for this race so really quick rundown of what we're talking about eastern states um which is 100 about 103 miles a little over 20,000 feet of vertical mostly trail it's one single loop without any repetition. It's in the PA wilds. It's a little bit rocky. Would you guys say a little bit rocky? A couple a of rocks bit. here and there. There's a little bit. 30, couple 30, hills. A couple hills. 36 hours to finish it. It is part of the triple crown. The triple crown being the higher 50K, the world's end 100K, the Eastern States 100 miler. And then um, as a bonus, as a part of the blacklist includes the, uh, help me out here, it's the 100K that's coming up in October. The Black Forest. Thank you. Black Forest 100K is coming up in October mm -hmm. to make the, if, if folks who do all four of them are on the blacklist, if you do all three, it's triple crown. Um, this one's got a little over a 50% finish rate, even in the best of conditions. Just there were 121 finishers this year with just over 200 entrants. Just to give you an idea, for those of you who are very familiar with 100 milers, there were only four people who cracked 24 hours. That's how difficult this race is, only four people. Whereas for a lot of people, cracking 24 hours is a very realistic goal. Not necessarily so on this particular course. So let's dive into these particular stories from all four of you. Oh, man. Um, the story of the day that everybody was talking about, of course, is Ryan Clifford. You came in first place. So I'm going to start with you in uh, just over 20 hours. And that is an 1147 pace. So just simmer in that for a second. That's an 1147 pace, right? <laughs> um, and this is not your first win of the year either. So you've also got Greenbelt 50K, Cayuga 50 Miler, and Black Hills under your belt just for 2022. So talk to us about what your goals were going into Eastern States and why did you choose this race? Of course. So going into this race, I, I guess starting earlier in the year, I planned my races in the first half of the year to kind of build up into like, you know, having a 50 K having a 50 miler, hundred miler. And then uh, my last race was a hundred miler in, in South Dakota and so you thought a hundred miler would be a great training race for a hundred miler. Exactly. Got it. Okay. I just want to make sure we're clear. Um, um, but that one, that one had 16,000 feet of climbing. So I knew going into this, like this race was going to be much harder because it had 20,000 feet and then just Pennsylvania trails are terrible in their own. So, <laughs> um, but I actually got hurt at my, uh, last hundred miler, which, like each race was strategically planned and this, it was two, uh, two months apart. So eight weeks. And I got her 102 miles into 
the 105 mile race, I got to end up going and getting an x-ray and then an MRI. Um, and I had a deep bone bruise on my tibia, um, from a fall. So I had to take actually three and a half weeks off, um, going into that. And then I became kind of a, uh, a cyclist, I guess you could say for about eight days. And then I, uh, ran up my mileage and, uh, did not get like any hill training at all. Um, and not a lot of, uh, running on the trails because I was kind of, um, from the bad experience of just falling, I was like, I don't want to get far this race. So mm-hmm. I knew going into the race, I, I was not as prepared as I should have been. Um, and it, I think it definitely showed, uh, as the day went on. Yeah. Um, just a, a phenomenal day. And I, <laughs> I love these comments coming in a hundred mile race as a training for a hundred miler is a great young man's training plan, <laughs> great training plan altogether. And probably something speed goat would, would say, I just do a hundred for a hundred and, um, really, really great day. It was all the buzz. Every, that's what everybody was talking about. Uh, well, if you were out on the course, if you were crewing, if you were pacing, even if you were running, I even heard about you. So, uh, pretty cool. That was your, was just this year, a race of the year. Um, between uh, the South Dakota race and this race, yeah, it would, okay. I, I'd say both of them are probably the A race. Um, okay. And like for this one going to it, I was definitely shooting for the course record. Uh, but like I said, I didn't, I didn't have the training. So in the middle part of the day, um, and I think at one point my crew said I was actually 36 minutes under a course record pace at um, one of the A stations. So I, I had a little bit of a, a buffer. And then as the day went on, uh, yeah. At like 63 miles, I think I only had 10 minutes on the course record. Then I know at 80 miles, I was 10 minutes behind the course record. So, mm-hmm. um, but no, it was it was a great race, a uh, great organization uh, that put it on. So I would, I would definitely come back. Oh, great. That was one of my other questions. But uh, yeah, course record is a, a pretty, that's going to be a rough one um to be even in the best of conditions. So For sure. uh, thanks. Thanks, Ryan, for giving us that rundown. Uh, I'm going to jump over to Justina. Um, man, just flew through that course. And again, uh, you've had a really solid year. I knew I recognized you for some from somewhere. It was Laurel Highlands. I know I've seen you around, but I was in Laurel Highlands. And I believe I remember seeing you at the finish line because you won and then you stuck around and, and cheered on a lot of people. So that's just so awesome. You finished in 2604. Again, that's a 1516 pace. And that's just insane. Um, you've had several other wins in the area, Naked Nick, Call of the Wilds, which Call of the Wilds is the beginning of the Eastern States course, Blues Cruise, Finger Lakes. And because I stalk everybody and I'll sign up. This is what I do. It's a hobby of mine. And my second hobby is running. My first one is stalking people. (laughs) And in 2015, you ran on the rocks, which is, um, I'm in York. So you ran on the rocks trail run, which is our little local tiny race that um, we love having here. uh, That's just super fun. So um, Cayuga hat, you just keep getting wins all over the place. You're taking over the East coast, which I appreciate um, that goal, but, Tell us same thing. What um, what was your what were your goals going into Eastern States? What was your plan? How did it go for you? Well, um, can you hear me well? Um, so I did not have a goal actually to run this race. Uh, I'm coming out of the reconstructed foot surgery last year, and I had to crew for a friend of mine, Mike Crowley, last year for Eastern States. And I saw the excitement, the challenge, and I, I barely could walk back then. Uh, I just got off the boot, uh, orthotic boot, and um, I, I couldn't run. I couldn't do really much, and uh, I was eager to start running. And, of course, it took months and months to come back because my leg was very swollen. Uh, they actually told me to stop walking, just go to the bathroom and back, and that's it. So I started slowly around October, and then, you know, more and more miles. Uh, I I signed up for the Black Canyon as a goal to, to have a 
like a family trip and and run that and and then I thought well let's see how the year goes and I signed up for more races the Laura Highlands and I signed up for Easter States quite late I think that was in uh, in the spring and I found out I got in from the list I think that was May and right after Laura Highlands I broke my toe big toe that was the second fracture within one year. So uh, I was forced to, I, I ran uh, even with the broken toe. I just ran on flats and on asphalt. Uh, I, I stayed away from, uh, from trails. So I guess the last month uh, in July, I got on trails and tried to catch up, to get as much elevation as I could. And uh, it wasn't as much as I would like to, of course. But I thought, well, Eastern States is, is tough course. I only knew that course from the 50K, the call, call of the wild. So I knew from that preview that, uh, you know, it's going to be a challenge. So I felt fresh for the first, let's say, 60, 65 miles. And, um, but I think lack of that um, uh, the bird, uh, enough training on trails that showed up after 60, 70 miles. I just slowed down. Uh, I slowed down, but uh, my goal was to... Uh, well, my plan B was to stay, to be as close to 25 hours as possible and have fun and not get lost. Plan B was just finish, still have fun without, you know, getting lost. So I, I think I met my goals. I, I, I enjoyed the course. I enjoyed um, getting to eight stations and being cheered on. Uh, volunteers were excellent. They were just so helpful. I've never seen uh, such exciting people they were just excited to help others so uh, i'm happy I, I i was able to run this course and and finish and still come first so uh, in spite of my um hard year because i was trying to get back to running a uh, little by little so i love awesome. what i'm hearing right now because both the first place female and male said i trained on the road and I am just like, I should sign up for Eastern States and I will win because I don't think anyone. <laughs> I, would, I would I would pay to see you sign up for Eastern States, Ali. <laughs> Seriously. I'm loving what I'm hearing because I went into Eastern States injured and not that that would have gotten me a win because it definitely, if I wasn't injured, I still maybe would have finished. Um, but it gives hope. I think to those of us who next year, Grace, and, you and I. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah, let's talk about that yeah. later. Okay. Yeah. Now, Nicole, you and I have been talking about Eastern States for years. Um, you know, those, <gasps> those folks who know who know me, I lead the um, South Central Pennsylvania chapter of Trail Sisters, and Nicole runs. Um, I you co-lead the um, Philadelphia Trail Sisters group so we've been talking um for a while now about our adventures mm -hmm. and and i asked if you would come on and and this is so this is interesting nicole and i have been talking about this and i've been following her adventures she follows mine and i said hey would you come on to trails collective you got an awesome story and and she's like i don't know i'm boring and <laughs> And, and I said, I would love to hear your story because here's the thing is, Nicole, you just put in the work. Like, I I stalked you as well, which we've talked already, but I still stalked you. And it could be that your first 25K, like, I'm not going to judge. Maybe you did it with a friend or something like that. But 25, 2015 was Heiner 25K in five hours. 2016 was Heiner 25K in four hours. And then it, like you've just incrementally put in the work year after year doing World's End 50K, World's End 100K several times. And we talked before and you had pulled yourself from Eastern States before saying, you know what, I'm not ready. I'm not going to sign up for it. Or you pulled yourself or something. I don't remember which one. And then you made a decision. This is what I'm going to do. You put in the work and then you finish and you got second place. Um, <laughs> And I hate to talk about age, but this is important for, for the women out there. You're 49, right? I'm 44, Grace. Oh, Tina's 49. I'm looking at 
ultra sign up results. I am going to own this here. <laughs> <laughs> there I is another Nicole Warner who is 49. Okay. Um, so yes. If it's so I, in your 40s and you yeah. took you took second place at Eastern States, which is an incredibly difficult race. And, and so I want, I want those women out there to hear <laughs> who are, who just put in the work every day and are maybe in their forties, like a little bit about your goals and your stories. Well, hold on. Justina is 49. So, so Justina is 49. I don't know. Yeah. 47. 40. Actually, I just turned 47 I mean, when I went to the race. So. Justina, what wow. are they doing to us? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> we'll still be here when we're 49, dominating. <laughs> I promise. We just need a couple more years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, proudly representing the middle-aged suburban working mom division. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Did you come in in your van? Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I've been dying to get a minivan. Drive um, up in the minivan. My husband yeah. thinks I just want one, but <laughs> I, I, I really don't. Um, yeah, it's so I uh, I fell in love with Heiner. Um, geez, like 13 years ago, there was a story in um, like Runner's World about Heiner. And my son was just a baby. And I, I showed it to my husband. I was like, look at this. This is so cool. And he was like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> you just had a baby. Um, and then did, you know, did it a couple years later. Um, actually, that first year was with him. So we can blame him for, for slowing me down. Um, but uh, signed up for Eastern States in 2018 when it was canceled. And then I signed up for it in 2021 when it was canceled. And I was like, oh, you know, this is just not meant to be. Um, so I ran rim to river and I finished rim to river and I said, great. I, you know, I ran my hundred. I'm, I'm absolutely never doing that again, never doing that again. And then pretty much signed up for Eastern States as soon as it opened, <laughs> like we all do. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're right. Like there's no magic formula to what I do. I don't have any like special talents. Oh, um, you're a fast hiker. I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> I do. I do spend some time on the treadmill hiking. You know, my kids are out like shooting hoops and they're like, go for a walk and they come back and they're like, you're still on the treadmill. Yep. Still on the treadmill hiking away. Um, but uh, yep. I hired a coach. I worked with Michelle Yates at Rugged Running. Lots of strength. Lots of strength. Um, and you know, she's, she's got a great program and work hard. Love it. Have friends. Um, I also was injured a couple weeks before the race and, um, Justina, you know, um, Tom Peterson, who was my pacer mentor and he was like, you're fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, I can't do it. Um, and, you know, just had good friends that I was training with who were like, you can do it. Keep going. Have, you know, just do the work. Um, practice nutrition. Like, put in the time. Figure out what you like. Um, and I really think, um, you know, you were talking about the stats of how many people finish. And um, Erica Gaffney ran the race with me, too, um, from Philly. And um we're like, wow, there really weren't that many women who ran. And like being in Trail Sisters, um, just want to see more women get out there and give it a shot. Um, because it's like Ryan and everybody was saying, it's a great community, so much support. Um, and I, I really feel like anybody can do it if you put the work in. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, my daughter has been doing a lot of volunteering this year with me mm -hmm. and, and that was her comment. She's like, everybody's so nice. Yeah. And like uh, the, the women are nice. The men are nice. I've literally never had any issues with the men. The men are always just so supportive. Even when you pass them. Yeah. <laughs> my daughter was my, uh, she's my crew chief. She had a stopwatch. So I only had, you know, seven minutes at, e at each aid station. So after four minutes, she would like be like, get going, mom. Nice. And um, after the race, she was like, I don't know, mom, everybody's 
everybody's so nice in this sport. Like nobody's, you know, trying to get ahead of each other, you know, everybody's helping each other out. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, on the, on the, um, mom portion of this and the trail sisters getting more women we have a question from uh faith mm -hmm. allison in the chat for nicole and justina you can chime in too did you run through your pregnancy and how did you get back to racing after having kids so um i guess uh why don't nicole you can start and then justina why don't you if you have a perspective also answer afterwards I ran, I ran a little bit in the beginning. Um, my kids are only a, a little over a year apart. Um, so it's kind of all blur, but um, I didn't, I, I ran a little bit, but I, I really wasn't actually running that much. You know, my kids are 12 and 13. Um, but then afterwards, um, I would say like six months after just started, you know, you do a lot of walking with the double bob stroller. Uh, I don't even know if that's still out there. Stroller walking. Everybody yeah. take note. Stroller walking, serious. Um, and my husband was awesome and he knew like I needed alone time and would say like, hey, you should go for a run. Um, I lived off the Green Ribbon Trail here. Uh, I lived in Ambler when my kids were little. So just jot down to the trail. It was, get some time in and you, you ramp up slowly. So I also think it's like, great, find a, find a buddy that you can run with and um, partner up. So you have that accountability to get out there and just take it a little bit at a time. And Justina, do you have any, yeah. uh, anything to add? Uh, well, just very briefly, uh, I was pregnant. I was 20 years ago. And so I, my, my pregnancy was at risk. So I was just afraid to, to lose it. So I stopped running and then I restarted. Maybe I had a C-section and I restarted running maybe three, four weeks after, but just a little bit. And, uh, uh, I worked full time till my last day of pregnancy. And then eight weeks later, I had to go back to work. So uh, I I walked a lot. I actually took my son in the stroller and I walked to work like 45 minutes each way. Uh, and then uh, when he got a little bit older, I put him in a stroller, a uh, running stroller. And actually, I lived by Pennypack Park uh, back then. And uh, I'm not sure if you know, it's very hilly. So I, mm -hmm. I run, I, I ran those hills uh, with my son and, and not too often and not all the time. Uh, whenever I could, I, I, I just went to run, um, you know, on my own, uh, mm -hmm. on my own. And uh, I joined the YMCA so I could leave him because uh, I, I don't really have a family. My husband was working. Uh, mm -hmm. So I really had to uh, try to squeeze my workout in whenever I could. So um, it's at one point I, I ran at five o'clock in the morning because that was the only time I could go. Uh, if I did not go uh, after work, it, it, there was no way I, I could work. Uh, I could run. Um, I signed up to y one, uh, YMCA uh, where I left my son there uh, in the in the um, in the preschool uh, for an hour or two, so I could run. I could uh, uh, lift some weights, and then after all, we could just go in the pool and swim together. So I try to make it work uh, and really like going back to running and uh, specific, uh, you know, um, training blocks that was probably later on when he was four or five years old. So I didn't really race much when, when he was little. So it was gradual. And I, I went back to uh, running roads. I, I, I pretty much I come from roads. I come from track and field and cross country and then uh, progress to roads, marathons and trail running, uh, all trust that started probably about seven years ago. So when I was turning 40, 39, 40. So this is my problem. This is my problem. I came from hiking and in hiking, <laughs> we're really good at eating food, but not at moving fast. Now, <laughs> <laughs> the two, the two of you were talking about, uh, you know, what you, what you do. Um, yeah, having having company, I think, is is helpful. If you're anything like me, and maybe uh, Ryan Williams here, if if you don't have any friends, you just make races. You come races. <laughs> and then people have to be your friends, or at least nice to you, because because you can, you know, you, you, you're at the finish line. So Ryan Williams, also, um, you just had a really solid day. I mean, it's tough to break the top, uh, to break 
30 hours on this race. So you got 36 hours to finish it. You did come in under 30 hours, which again is, is just such a, um, a huge accomplishment. Um, and you also did finish worlds on hundred K you finished grindstone. I do want to hear, uh, your goals. How did Eastern States go for you? And also for those listeners out there who are thinking about races, how does this race compare to Grindstone? So tell us about your day and then um, how do you compare the two? Yeah, so um, my day did not go as expected. Uh, like I probably, love that. Great probably start. a lot of people. Um, my goals, uh, I'll just say faster than 29 hours. Uh, I mean, I ran about 29 in 29, 18. And, and I, and I hoped to go significantly faster than that. Uh, I had a good day at world's end cracked top 10 and felt like I was just closing towards the end and I could have kept going and it would have been a better race for me if I even kept going longer. So I felt pretty confident, um, at having a decent time at Eastern. Um, I had a couple setbacks in between the two. Um, so just some little niggles that flared up and, uh, you know, setback training, but all in all, it, it was still a good day out there. Um, I had a great crew, my girlfriend and her parents were out there and two of my friends from like the Boston area were out to help me and they ended up pacing and, uh, like uh, I think Justina was just saying, the the volunteers were amazing. Every aid station was fantastic. Um, I would say the best I've ever experienced at any of the races I've been to. Um, just super welcoming, no matter what time you were rolling in. Tons of and you and you've done a lot of races across the East Coast. I feel like you have a really good view of that. I've seen some, not you know. Yeah. I, I've seen a fair amount and uh, he's seen some things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I did, I did see something in particular in the middle of the night that I almost stepped on until it rattled off up, a uh, up a slope. Um, did anybody else see rattlesnakes? Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the nest at the end, Ryan Clifford? I did not. I only saw uh, two rattlesnakes along that snowmobile trail. Um, okay. 40 miles into the race. Um, but I didn't realize there were rattlesnakes until um, after. And I was like, I'm not going back to check. <laughs> <laughs> this course is notorious for him. <laughs> All right, keep going, Ryan Williams. <laughs> I, I was looking for, I, see, I was going slow enough at the end that I had time to look around for the den. And mm -hmm. uh, I was just like, is that the den? Is that the den? And uh, I don't know if it was too chilly for him. I'm what so, are you thinking? Like it's gonna be something like they're they, like a snake with like a little like bow tie on. You're like, hello, anybody home? He's gonna welcome <laughs> you in, like with some snacks. Why would you look for a den? Uh, I mean, I'm a field ecologist for my full time work, and I'm okay. back in for wildlife biology. So there's some I research just, along the way. I like it. Yeah. So um, yeah, the the day was good. The night was okay and uh and then the next morning uh I, I was ready to be i was ready to be done something flared up in my right foot mm -hmm. and uh i don't really know it, it's doing pretty well now but for the last three days it was like really swollen and i didn't i didn't roll my ankle or anything so i'm not exactly sure what happened but so it was a little painful the last 10 or 15 miles hobbling yeah. around but and and you finished like you finished sub 30 so that you can appreciate there were people who finished six hours after you. I know I, you know, finishing in, in 29 hours, I still had time to like hang out for a bit, go back to the campsite, take a two hour nap, wake up, have a beer and be like, oh, man, I feel sorry for the, you know, people are still so out. Hard. It's so impressive that right. I, I, can't, I can't even imagine. Uh, my girlfriend and her mom went down to watch the last hour and they were just amazed at the people coming in at 35 plus. Those it's, are the tough. That's yeah. the toughest nails. For well, Grace, that was your race plan. That was my race plan, did not happen. That's all right. Well, it was interesting because you when you sent me the, the sheet of like how like your plan, like Amelia and I were like, 
five, we were like, oh, 5 a.m. Wait, no, 5 p.m. And it was, it was awesome because I was like, this is like actually very smart. And I think like when we've talked before, when I interviewed you on the Voices podcast, like you have a very like different, but very like detailed strategy of like, I am exact, I want to hit these exact things and this is how much food I need. And it's very hiker. Yeah. 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 I, I know my place and it is in the back. And that's fine. I'm okay with it. I get to hang out with awesome people. So for the parties at Grace. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, so quick question. Uh, a couple questions from the chat. Um, yeah. So uh, Aaron Shimmons asked, did the runners have hourly calorie goals for the race? And did that go to plan? Um, so I know a little bit about Justina's just from Amelia. We talked about you on the way home, of course, no big deal. Um, but why don't we, uh, what, what was your guys's, uh, like nutrition and calorie plan? Why don't we start with, uh, Ryan Clifford? Yeah. I want to hear from him. Cool. Um, yeah. So my goal, because there were so many aid stations throughout the race was just to have solid food throughout the entire race. So, um, it was a little hard early on because they didn't really have, like cooked food until aid station three, uh, but there were 15 aid stations or 16 aid stations throughout the course. So throughout the day, you're able to really um, go and get something every hour, every hour and a half. Um, so I was just trying to put down solid food. Um, I usually use tailwind nutrition um, in my one flask and then the other one I use water. Um, so I was just kind of rotating between those. And uh, with all of that, like that did the trick for me. I did have stomach issues later on in the race as most people experience. Um, but yeah, I, I was just trying to put solid food down the entire day. So I love that you say that the aid stations are an hour, hour and a half apart because that's like for you, buddy. For me. <laughs> <laughs> but like with my crew coming up with the plan of like, how are we going to do this? Um, sure. like, what are we going to do? That, that, that was like my mentality for it. Did you, now do you use any gels, waffles, anything like that? Yep. So I was using the, um, I think they're like 200 or no, maybe they're a hundred calories of, uh, the goo liquid. And uh -huh. I was, um, popping those. I probably only had like eight or 10 throughout the day, but pretty much any time there was going to be a big hill climb, I would just pop those right before. And that's that's a a lot. Nice. Justina. Uh, well, nutrition is my struggle. Um, I, <laughs> I pretty much um, rode on uh, gels for the first 60 miles and uh, tried to grab something like, uh, you know, hot, uh, I mean, m ms or uh, when they had cooked food, a pierogi here and there, but uh, not really. Um, it's, uh, I'm, I'm scared of having um, stomach issues, but I know that eventually I do have to start eating uh, solid food. So after 60 miles, I tried to have something other than mostly gels. But um, with me, it's always work in progress and um, I need to focus on that. What yeah. kind of gels are you using, Justina? Uh, well, it's any, it's just the stinger, stinger, stingers um, or goo, but uh, I don't have specific ones. I mean, they, 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 none of these give me any stomach problems. So uh, as long as I get a, uh, a hundred calories here and there. I mean, like every hour, uh, I, I'm usually fine till about 60 miles. After that, I, I have to focus on eating a real food if I want to yeah. last longer. But I do yeah. get uh, weak by that uh, point, so. And I love yeah. that you appreciate the pierogies in Pennsylvania. I don't know <laughs> if that's, if it's starting to spread to other states, but you can count on Pennsylvania to have some pierogies. <laughs> I'm Polish, so I love pierogi anyway. <laughs> so it's great. Good. Nicole? Uh, so I did 18 spring energy gels. Um, which, which spring energy gels do you do? So I do a variety. Um, do, you do, I, do you do the speed nut? I do the speed nut. Um, caffeine, not caffeine. I So I, I made Ziplocs for each aid station. Um <laughs> the the kids and I like practice before the race, like pulling everything out and stuffing it back in. And then they would like kind of chastise me if I hadn't had them all, um, which I never did. I think they liked yelling, just yelling at me the whole race. 
Yeah. Um, no, they were, they were great. Um, so yeah, spring energy gels work really well for me. Um, awesome sauce, the yellow one, the pink one. Um, I think I did three or four of the wolf packs, like those big oatmeal yeah. ones. Um, they have like 310 calories. Um, and then, um, my pacer Kelly grabbed me at Heiner and I was, I, I just, after Richie road, it was like really exposed which mm. was surprising to me. That was like the one section I hadn't previewed. So um, <laughs> that's like, why I DNF'd at Richie Road is because I knew what was up next. Oh, that, and everybody was like, oh, it's no big deal, Richie Road to Heiner. I'm like, yeah. uh, okay. Like, yeah, that kind of wasn't my favorite section. Um, so you're always like happy when you see your crew. So I was like happy to see them. And poor Kelly, like as soon as we start, She's talking and I'm just like, uh, uh, so we got to the next aid station and she got me eating some more real food. Um, mainly like some fruit, like some good sugar. Um, I don't do like a ton of, um, like the heavier foods just because I don't think I, my body can digest them. Um, but sky top pancakes were like, sent from the heavens i just like i don't even know how many pancakes i ate tom was like all right you know like let's leave ihop here um and then barons which i volunteered at twice which i love barons nobody drops barons um french toast there just so good um so i do i actually do pretty good with nutrition it was good ryan williams um yeah i ate i ate a lot of gels um a lot a lot of gels i i use spring as well and i was do you, uh, do you, that? Do you use the speed nut no i i was going back and forth between um awesome sauce and canterbury yeah and i also use more in gels so i was taking in two an hour one spring one more in and then i also had uh Kind of like Ryan was doing with one bottle of uh, one flask water, one flask electrolytes with little calories in there. And that worked great. My coach uh, has stressed the whole time I've worked with him, like training that during the long runs. So mm -hmm. no stomach issues the whole time. I started yes. eating solid food too when I started to slow down. So maybe I'd like, instead of doing a gel, I would... I would eat like a bunch of pierogies and tater tots or something. But uh, yeah, fueling, fueling was not, not the problem, but I ate an obscene amount of gels. And I was, I was pretty happy though. At the end, usually I get that like burning top of the mouth. I, yeah. I'm sure you folks have all experienced that. And I like mm -hmm. at world's end when I finished, I was so hungry, but I couldn't eat anything because it hurt so bad. Yeah. Uh, this time, not at all. I don't know what it was. Maybe I killed all those, you know, sensing parts of my mouth. But <laughs> yeah, it's good. drink plenty of water. Maybe that could I be drink, part of it. Drink I have, water. I have to ask about speed nut every time. So I did. I ran, which I think Justina, you ran this before. I think if I remember right, Hex Hollow Half. No, it was Squirrely. I was running Squirrely, uh, Squirrely Tail Trail Tail One in York County and Scott Newcomer, great race director. And my pack got soaked right before the race, like in the back seat. So I, I ended up in the bathroom. I was like, oh. <laughs> no, back seat, thankfully. And so I just ran with a soft flask and then I threw all of my gels in my shorts pockets. But then when I ate one, like I would put it into my shorts and I finished the race and my friend Barb was at the finish line and, and I was talking to Barb and I looked down and I go, oh, I got speed nut on my shorts. <laughs> I didn't even realize what I said. Speed nut's the best. And yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I've had speed nut in my shorts. <laughs> See, you guys all did this correctly. Like you're like, yeah, I practiced with gels. I used gels. In my in my hundred, I was like, you know what? I I should have a turkey and cheese sandwich, something I haven't had since middle school right now. Mm -hmm. That sounds like such a good idea. 
<laughs> and we know how that went. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you and you, you still had a great day. <laughs> oh, I had a great day. Um, we I think we're talking about shoes next, right? Yeah, we, we got a question to talk from about. Joseph. Let's, Let's hear about it. shoes. Um, Ryan Clifford, start us off. What was your plan and what how did it end up with shoes? So I used a pair of shoes, um, the Hoka Torrance, um, okay. which may not have been the best option, uh, because like the front of the shoe isn't really um protected by the rocks too much, it's just kind of the fabric. Um, and I already did, uh, 70 K in them. I did a 50 K in them and I did my last hundred mile in them. So like, they're kind of in the same um, pair or the, same, it's the same pair. That's the same pair. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I should not have done this race in them. And it definitely showed at eight station three, um, when we first saw the crew, the right tread of my, uh, shoe was like the back, right. was completely like mm -hmm. destroyed and it was oh, dangling. Wow. So I had, uh, my crew chief take it off and then by the end of the race the left side had like the same issue so you yeah. never change shoes i didn't change shoes shoes at all during the race now i love it <laughs> your pacer had on like hoka clifton's i was like is that a smart choice uh, yeah my pacer yeah he actually uh he hadn't run uh wow. until that we did a like the pre-meet the day before but he hadn't run before that for like six or seven months so wow and the hoka clifton's uh, uh road shoe yeah. yeah just for our audience that is a road shoe that your pacer was in so that's bold but yeah looking to get new shoes maybe the um the new uh hoka shoe with the carbon plate for the trail shoes yeah. um, i think eric was in those eric kosak he did come in um he hit his goal he was looking for under 24 and he did hit that and i know he was planning to run it with a carbon uh, it has like a carbon shoe a uh, carbon plate in it yeah. Yeah. Is that what you were in, Nicole? The Hoka carbon plated? No, but Eric and I were talking about before, I actually won a pair of those because we did a Trail Sisters self-defense class sponsored by nice. Hoka. So I won a pair and I was like, oh, these are cool. I'll try them out. But I'd only worn them twice tapering. So I'm like, Eric, what do you think? And he's like, yeah, wear them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm not like really that adventurous. So I, um, I had speed goats. They were great. Um, I, Before or the five? The five. The new one. Okay. Um, yeah. The new one. Um, and I changed my shoes at Heiner uh, because they got wet. And I knew like for me, that's when I get blisters. Um, okay. And then I chained them at Blackwell because um, the karaoke podiatrist, um, doctor, I can't remember his name. Um, but he, uh, did a little work on my left foot. So I, I took that opportunity to change my shoes. So I don't know what it is. It just feels so good to. Did, so did you change into the same style of shoe? Yeah. I mean, they were an older pair, but, um, was this yeah. go for, cause there's, there's, there were some differences between the two. Yeah, I had the, I have, yeah, I had three pairs of the fives. Already. Okay, great. They just came out. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I trashed them. So I wondered why we can't get any in the store. You've got Yeah, because like, Nicole has, she right. goes through a pair every yeah, month. Yeah, North Wales running store. Yeah, got, um, they hooked me up. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I really uh, like Bill Schlorf. That was the um, singing podiatrist. Yes. Podiatrist. Amazing. He's like, you got some tendonitis. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so Ryan Williams, um, what was your shoe plan? How did it go? Would you use? I wore um, the Ultra Temp Force the whole time. Okay, great. Same pair. Same pair. I had shoes to change if I wanted to, and... Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want to. I changed yeah. socks once. Uh, now, just... what do you use? Because the Ultra has that nice toe splay. Do you use toe socks? No, I wear uh, darn toughs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a solid choice. Justina. Great. And I ran in the same pair of shoes and socks for entire race. So uh, I also had the Hoka Torrance uh, and by the end of the race, by last two miles, the one sh shoe, 
the bottom just got ripped off and dangling. And these the, these shoes are quite new. I bought them three weeks prior. So um, I contacted the running warehouse and I'm going to be returning them. But yeah, I didn't change my shoes or socks. I, I had an extra pair just in case. Uh, I had uh, a few pairs of socks, but I I just didn't feel like, you know, it's it's worth it for me to, to change it. Uh, they were quite dry, uh, so I didn't change them. So. Yeah, they might they might ask you, they might say, well, which race did you do? And if you say, <laughs> I'm going to try not to tell them what happened. <laughs> tell them it was a different race. Hopefully they won't see this, Justina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the last gear question we have. What do you guys do for lighting? Mm -hmm. Ryan, start at Clifford. So the um, the headlamp that I used, I started the race with the uh, the Petzl Reactive headlamp, mm -hmm. um, and then I, if I have it, I just take the battery out um, and I put it in like a Ziploc bag after like you can see during the day, um, and then I just carry it in my pack. And then I had the Reactive headlamp again um later on and i had it for like 10 or 12 miles like on when, once it got dark and like the headlamp did like the double flicker um where it was like dying and i was confused because i had it charged fully um and that's the second time i've had this happen in a year where the headlamps died so i'm gonna have to switch to something else um probably still petzl but yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i was I, i'm not happy about my uh my headlamp choice and i didn't have a backup with me um, which was also a mistake. <laughs> That's scary. But someone at a someone at the Barons gave me a headlamp, and um, they ended up meeting me at the finish line as well. So that was a uh, that was clutch for sure. That's the trail community right there. Um, I started with a Petzl headlamp, um, and then at Slate Run, um, I have an Aspire waist lamp. Um, I. I like it because it's like, you know, I'm running through the entire night and just to not have that pressure on my head the whole time. But um, I was really glad to have a pacer because the way that the reflective flags are, the the waist lamp wasn't really great. Uh, um, now, is that the new, there's a new one Ultra Aspire came out with a rechargeable, pretty solid waist lamp. Yeah, that's what I have. I mean, yeah. it was great for illumination. Sure. Um, it just like a little low. It what it was just a little low. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I loved it and it's super comfortable. Um, it was it was really good. I used it at Rim to River as well. Um, and then it died. It it doesn't last as long as the yeah. pretzel. Um, and then I switched to that. Um, I think it black well. So, uh, or after climbing Blackwell, which hmm. a little while. Yeah. Ryan Williams. <laughs> um, I started off in the morning with uh, a black diamond headlamp and then, um, to run through the night, I had that same headlamp on as well as one of those, uh, ultra spire waist lamps as well. Um, the double. Yeah. It's all the double. You can That's see the great. shadows and it like blasts the whole forest full of light. And I was able to see that snake because of it. So, right. So you can do some research along the way. I the snake was like, we've been expecting you, Ryan. We have <laughs> <laughs> Maggie Guterell explained this one time and I followed it ever since with really big stuff is like you, you're looking where your headlamp is, but your peripheral and the direction that you're moving in is still the direction of the waist lamp. Mm -hmm. So you get like, you do both and then you have much better visibility. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it a lot nicer running through the night with that. With, especially with this type of course. Totally. Yeah, for sure. All right, Justina, what, what uh, Polish technology did you use? <laughs> I just use a Petzl headlamp, the same one for entire race. Just change the battery at uh, around 80 miles. That's all. And it was sufficient. I'm very simple with everything. <laughs> well, just the moon. Just call on the moon. <laughs> the moon was amazing. We just couldn't see it for like such a long time. 
because we were under the canopy, but it, we like kept looking. <laughs> okay. Uh, I one of the things that I want to hear really quick because um, I know we want to wrap up stuff a little bit quick uh, soon, but. Would you do it again? Ryan Clifford, I think you had already said it. You said you'd do it again. I would definitely say in the future, I'll hit the race again, go for the course record. Um, definitely going to need to hit more hill training, um, get some more time on the trails, uh, et cetera. But I mean, everything was there. It just, I didn't have it um, going to do it. But I think it would be in the next, in a few years, because I already have kind of a track of things I plan on doing in the next couple of years. So probably maybe three or four years, uh, I would go back and even try to do like the triple crown. Cause that sounds really cool. Um, and get, get to see more of the area as well. Yeah. Triple crown blacklist. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Love hearing that. Ryan Williams. How about you? Would you do it again? Um, you know, <laughs> the beginning of this week, I would have said, no, I'm good with a one and done. Uh, yeah. but I originally was going to do the triple crown, but because of a family thing had to miss Heiner this year. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll be back. Um, answering your question about grindstone versus oh, Eastern. Thank you. Earlier, yeah. Um, definitely harder than grindstone. Okay. Uh, I, I had a busted foot for 75 miles at Grindstone and finished two and a half hours quicker. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's pretty brutal out there. I would take long a few long climbs and descents over up and down any day, I think. Yeah, and Grindstone is super tough still. Super, super oh, tough. Yeah. It's not a slouch of a race, but um, if you have running legs, uh, like – any of you folks here would uh, have a blast there, I think. Hard, but there's a lot of good running to be had. Good. It's always good to hear that perspective for somebody who's done them both. Justina, how about you? Are you doing it again? Uh, I might. Uh, and uh, as Ryan said, I, I, I've done grindstone in the past. And also, uh, even though grindstone had more elevation, um, I did it in over two hours and a half faster because uh, Eastern States is just more technical but mm -hmm. i don't know what uh, there's something about eastern states that uh, i've guessed this challenge that i uh, i didn't want to do it at first and and uh, now as the, as i'm more rested i feel like wow i really want to go back and just train for it and see how fast how much faster i can do it so oh, i might come back i might come back next year nice we want to see that too we want to <laughs> see how fast you can do it i love that nicole how about you uh i'll be back volunteering Nice. Um, I will. I feel like I uh, am good. Um, yeah. I I enjoyed it. I mean, I I'm so glad I did it, especially after you know thinking like, oh man, maybe it's like not in the cards for me. Um, but there's some races in the Catskills next year that you know I really am interested in. I grew grew up in upstate New York, so. Um, you know, I think I, think I want to get back to that and, um, maybe like travel around a little bit more and, and just, there's so many great races out there and I love volunteering and crewing and pacing. So I, you know, I'll be back. I already told Jade, like, give me a good job. Um, yeah. and, um, you know, yeah, but the, the hundred mile distance is, it's tough. It's, it's a really tough on the body. Um, it's tough for training when you like my, my, I have a job and then I'm like the Uber mom of driving. Um, so, um, you know, I think, I think this year probably to take off from the hundred mile distance, um, and do some other stuff. Nice. Help, yeah. uh, help some of your, your other folks, um, who are slow hikers, your other slow hiker friends get faster. I could, I could use some of that. Yeah, I'd love to do next year. Like, um, I went out in July for three days and just did like big sections of the course. And I think that would be fun, like kind of how they do the Western States training weekend, like mm -hmm. to do something like that. You know, there's so many great people out there and like coordinate a nice day out or a couple days to, to see it and do it would be fun. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that's um, the next quick question. What do you have next, Nicole? Um, I am actually doing um, a trip with um, Aspire out in the North Cascades in September. Um, so there's a bunch of trail sisters going out for three days, hiking, running. Um, so we'll be doing 80 miles out there um, and no races yet. All right. Good. Take yeah. a break from it. Justina, yep. how about you? What do you have next? What are you going to win next? Um, <laughs> well, I signed up for a Boulder Beast uh, in September and then Philly Marathon. Um, I still do some uh, road races. Not too many, but um, I just uh, like running fast sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You're so, fun. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what it's <laughs> like to run fast. That's not what I do. <laughs> Brian Williams, are you running your own race again? What do you have going on next? Yeah, as long as my foot is good in uh, three and a half weeks, I'm going to do the half marathon at the race I helped put on. And then um, I am registered for probably my favorite trail race, the Cat's Tail Trail Marathon up in the Catskills. When Nicole mentioned the Catskills, if you haven't done that one, that race is awesome. And um, looking cool. forward. Yeah, it'll be my fourth time doing that one. Nice. That'll be fun. I'm Ryan Clifford, how about you? What do you have next? What are you going to win? <laughs> I have a uh, inaugural 50-miler, uh, uh, the Hudson River 50, put on by Trials of Miles. I heard about the, that. Um, it looks nice. Yeah. In early October, yeah. It's two 25-mile loops, uh, which will be cool. And then actually I'm doing a uh, multi-day challenge for charity in the middle part of the uh, October, running from Buffalo to Brooklyn. And hopefully under a week. So 550 ish miles, about Ooh. three marathons a day. So. Wow. And can people follow along? Yeah. Yeah. I'll have everything on my Instagram and I have a website that I'll be uh, having my crew posting live updates for everyone. Ah, ah, that's so great to hear. Good luck on that huge adventure, Ryan. Oh uh, man, once you get a taste of being out there running for days, I tell you what, that's all I can think about is just for going sure. back to not working and running. <laughs> and it not sounds fun. like way more fun. Strategically plan your uh, your vacation days around that for the entire year. You're like, okay, I'm doing it this week. Yes. That's yeah. That's what we're doing. <laughs> nice. Well, good luck on that. It'll be a lot of fun. You can bring... Bring a whole lot of energy gels because yes. <laughs> glad you got um, used to some real food with Eastern States. All right, Ellie, um, I do want to throw out there. I have my race coming up on Saturday. I got my pillow. We're getting, we're giving out pillowcases. It's the Slopeside Slumber Party, and it's we're going to have race day registration if anybody's interested in coming. And it'll be uh, a mile and a half with 600 feet of gain. Super fun. <laughs> so if any of you who just finished Eastern States want to come join me, or if you just want to hang out and drink beer on the patio, we can do that too. Sounds Are you doing thing. it, Grace? No. <laughs> no. I'm gonna watch other people do it. The descent, the, the harshest part of the descent, because I ran it um, just to get the the course Strava information, is a 33% descent. Look, I'm not doing that. It's terrible. That's like slide down on your butt. Oh, that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think like the steepest grade at Eastern States. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's like a couple 50% grade sections. Not not too many, but like. There's some spots where you're holding on. Some of those downhills definitely seemed like there were 50%. <laughs> yeah, especially in the end, right? You're like, yeah. what the heck? <laughs> this is only a mile and a half of that and for yeah. three hours. Three hours timed. And well, it's a nice, I, I timed it out as a nice kind of um, training run for all the September fall events that are coming up. And sure. Twisted Branch is this weekend as well. It is. So you should be looking for that. Yeah. Good luck. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, coming on the show. This has been really great. You guys did amazing. Um, 
And, you know, it, it looked really awesome, like really fun out there. So uh, I still haven't recovered from things, you know, still, so I'm still, I don't have any, yeah. Um, but uh, next year, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe uh, Grace and I will be out there together. We'll see about that. Oh, I also want to put in a plug for being a pay transporter, but here's what I want to make a suggestion about, because if you're a pay transporter, which I am, you get one of these fancy hats. Like it depends on the level, but you can get a hat, right? Mm -hmm. It does not come with a handlebar mustache, just for the record. Uh, so you can it could. Be like, that's what I think. I think okay. we should add a handlebar mustache so we can we can look like Ian. Yeah, I have. I, I agree. We've done a few group runs and Trail Sisters. Nicole, I don't know if you do this, but Trail Sisters group runs with handlebar mustaches are super fun just you guys so. had him at the world's end aid station because we, we were did. we were right next to each other with our yeah, yeah, yeah. we had him at the world's end aid station handlebar yeah. mustaches yeah so the patreon supporters were, were working on adding handlebar mustaches to the package mm -hmm. just so you know um but you at least get a hat yeah yes and thank you to everybody who has supported us uh you guys are awesome uh, and thank you again, guys, for coming on the show and best of luck and recovery. And with what you have next, uh, hopefully it's a lot of rest, but then uh, be running again. Awesome. Thank Thanks for having us. Congratulations, yeah. everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. All right, Grace, we did it. All right. Thank you, everybody, again, for uh, tuning in with us. Ian might be back next week. He might be in the middle of the water. Uh, I don't know. And uh, we're just going to keep trucking along here. So uh, good luck with all the races that you guys have coming up. And you'll we'll, we'll hear from us. Hear from us again. Say hello online or come into the store or whatever.